$2.7 million. That is the balance of the reserve fund. Day one of a four-day strike planned by picketing SBC workers. And like you just said, we're getting word that the union and SBC has returned to the bargaining table in several cities. But at this hour, as you can see behind me, the strike still continues. The movie will begin shooting in four months. Beaumont is just one city making a cameo in this film. And look for its release next December, guys. All right, Tyler Wing. Our Tyler Wing has the story about a man alive today with a bullet in his head. Tyler. Freddie Tohill knows he's lucky to be alive. It's been less than a week since he was shot between the eyes with a 22 caliber handgun. And for the rest of his life, he must live with a bullet lodged in his head. I look at life completely different now. You know, it just... I shouldn't be here. I should be dead. KBTV Force Tyler Wing picks up the story from here. Over the river and through the woods. Anybody comes over and wants to ride, we'll ride them, see. To Damon Shirley's house we go. I ride kids around here. I don't know where to come from. First of all, there's sewage backing up into my bathtub, all into my carpet. Since I've been in this apartment, my son has missed nine days of school from being sick. Residents at the American Village apartment complex yeah. inviters say they've been plagued by raw sewage, which has seeped up drains, flooded the grounds, and damaged their personal belongings. Peter's been out for about two weeks, so now I have a sick baby. You know, we've been living, you know, I can't even really live there. According to residents, a property manager from Houston arrived today. He then fired and evicted the entire maintenance crew. If you don't leave the property, I'll have you arrested. Uh, what are you Fired every single one of them and evicted them, and which most of them have kids. Well, you said I lost my job is because I let the city uh, ordinance man get over here, and I let the news media get over here. He said that's the reason why I lost my job. What, what are you going to do now? I don't know. I'm out on the streets. I don't have nowhere to go, no money, no nothing. Sure, you can go dig these rocks up yourself. You know, they've got to go a long way to pick up rocks like this. Look at these guns. But yeah, we pretty much manhandle it all by ourselves. Physical, very I have to lift boulders and pallets and heavy rocks all day long. And the term dumb as a rock doesn't apply here. They think it's funny that we're actually paying money for something that's on the ground and we can get for free. <laughs> I mean, really. What's your favorite kind of music? Country and Western. You're supposed to say rock. Oh. Now, in this story tonight, we want to warn our viewers the images of this story are extremely graphic. KBTV4's Tyler Wing is now live inside the newsroom with this exclusive story. Tyler. Uh, well, Rick, the neighbors who live around the corner say this is not the first time these dogs have attacked. In fact, they're fed up, especially because of the children who play in this neighborhood. I much rather see it lying down on the ground dead than to see it standing there with all the flesh ripped off of his face and his ear gone, just standing there. According to police, sometime late last night or early this morning, two pit bulls got loose, went into the neighbor's yard, and mauled a seven-month-old colt. What may be even more disturbing is the fact this colt was still alive and standing when police showed up. The horse had to be destroyed. I ended up having to put the horse down, and once that was taken care of and I'd contact the owners, I contacted animal control, and we went and took possession of five pit bulls. Waiting in the wings, of course, Tyler Wing. He's in Port Arthur on Proctor Street, right smack dab in the middle of the celebrations. Hi, Tyler. No pun intended, I'm sure. Right. Well written <laughs> by our producer. Good, good. Well, yes, uh, Mardi Gras 2005 has not quite begun. The gates open tonight at 6. So right now, just the bands are doing all their checks and getting all their audio squared away. Uh, vendors are setting up. And the deal with these vendors, a lot, of the, a lot of these vendors, after Mardi Gras is over, they'll pack up and, and move on to the next event. But not so with the case of Cheryl here, Cheryl Light. Light, correct. Yes, and she's a local uh, artist. Yes, born, in, born and reared in Port Arthur, Texas. Now tell us about some of the things you sell in your particular booth here. Well, I'm a face artist, okay. so I do face painting. Finally! The backyard. Kind of oh boy, uh, is that the, the water slide? The Man, that looks like a lot of fun. Oh, okay, concentrate, Tyler. You're, you're doing an interview here. Uh, tell me about the design of the backyard. Well, we wanted to theme the backyard, Tyler. I can't take this anymore. Hey, hey, where are you going?
Tyler Wing, KBTV4, Silsby. Check out this little gem we unearthed. An original Elvis Presley record from Sam Phillips' Sun label out of Memphis, Tennessee. When, when we met him in person, without his makeup, you know, or he, or he just, he just plain Elvis, he's a fine looking boy. Fine looking. The twist to this story is that the South Tex wrestlers were not expecting media frenzy. Give me what you got. Sure, Media Frenzy can take it, but can Media Frenzy dish it out? Thank you, thank you. Hey. I think I really hit him. <laughs> From Nederland, I'm Tyler Wing, KBTV. And there was this crazy goose just chasing us. It was like something out of a nightmare. Well, I noticed him the first week he was here. Yeah, he launched at him, and I seen him running after him, so I started running after the goose. He was just mean. So the big question on everybody's mind is, whatever happened to the big, bad, aggressive goose of Dornboss Park? Here he comes, ladies and gentlemen. He comes down the course, he comes in, he's swinging on in, and... He's riding his skateboard. Oh, good job, Wendell, good job. Wendell, you could say, was adopted. So as I'm approaching the park, I see the goose, and he's chasing a guy. Thanks, Lenny. Well, Viter is like most communities across southeast Texas. They put their high school up on a pedestal, usually in the form of a water tower. But not only is tonight's game the KBTV4 game of the week, it's also Viter's homecoming. So let's go see if we can't find the fuel which burns the flame of Viter High School. As we discovered today, hackers can easily tap into your computer and steal any information you have stored. Here's how easy it is for someone to tap into your wireless internet connection. Uh, Using a wireless tonight. laptop, the latest free hacker software, and the vehicle of your choice, anyone could easily detect your computer. So we're just probably, what, a mile away? We've already got 32. After they were done voting, we pulled some students aside to get their perspective on the yeah, election and the issues they feel are most important. If you were president, what would you do to make this world a better place? Stop the wars. To be clean. I would stop everybody from cutting down trees. Reason harder with the um, terrorists. China can invade us right now and take over. What? I heard it on CNN. Eduardo Descoli's journey began in his hometown of Santa Lucia, just north of Buenos Aires. His goal is to cross the Atlantic to Europe and then ultimately end in North Africa. Many countries, many people, many towns, uh, many villages, uh, many Indians. Christina Brown says that in her 12 years of cooking, she's never experienced anything like this before. But after the novelty wore off, her concern soon shifted to the health of her children. And we had already eaten like two to four cans prior to finding that one, so we could have been eating contaminated beans because it was from the same lot number, stamped minutes apart. The San Diego State campus is now split down the middle, whether they should change their mascot from Monty Montezuma to a more politically correct mascot for the new millennium. It's every small market news station's dream to hover above the city covering news from the air. But Al Judice is living the dream, and he's not affiliated with any major media outlet. Until now. It's now day three. Danielle Van Dam is still missing. The streets have filled with media, reporters, photogs, live trucks. But now police are prepared to open up a new chapter in this story. More troops march into combat, not knowing if they'll see tomorrow, let alone family members they left behind. It was the bloodiest conflict our nation has seen. And as a mission, these Civil War reenactors want to make sure the future generations don't forget. and 40 years ago. Americans had two options. On one side, a foreign army has invaded.